Let's talk about FlyQ AFB 3.0, the biggest release we've ever made. What I'm going to do now is talk about three key features in the new release of the product. FlyQ AFB now runs in your iPhone just the same way it does on your iPad. The map is all the same, pings to zoom, and so on. You can turn on whatever layers you like, IFR low, radar, fuel prices, whatever it may be. When you take a look at the map, it looks a lot like on the iPad. A couple of differences, though, that have to do with the screen size. For example, the search box in the upper left corner, it expands automatically. So if I tap into it and I type in the ident of my home airport, PAE, then I hit the search button. It pops a full screen list of the airports. I can tap on my airport and it comes onto the screen, same as it does on the iPad. But now, again, to save space, I toggle between the satellite view, the SA diagram, and now the FAA diagram switches on there. I can tap on that and see it full screen. Again, pinks to zoom. I can see what the winds look like at the runway and so on. I can scroll up and see my comm frequencies, my runways, my nav aids, and so forth. Again, to make it easier for the iPhone, if you tap on that big area in the middle with all the general information, you see it nice and big, easy to read, runways and so on. Same thing with the comm frequencies. If I tap anywhere in the comm frequencies, I see them really large, easy to read. Weather, the weather I can toggle between my local radar, my regional radar, and my national radar. I can take a look at it in larger view if I like as well. I can scroll up a little bit and see the METAR. If I tap on the METAR or the TAF, I see it full screen, very easy to see. On the iPhone, very easy to read. Click Done, and this will go away. Approach plates. If I tap on any approach plate, I see it. I can flick it left and right. Position is on the plate. So it's their georeference, pinch and zoom. I can even click the map button on the right-hand side and see what it looks like on top of the map. The weather display is the same as on FlyQ EFB for wind optimization. I have my full gallery of all the same graphics that are on the iPad version of the product. I can look at my, at my flight plans. Now, a neat feature, in the middle of the screen is a button bar that says Navlog Weather Briefing and IKO Plan. Double tap on that, and it moves it from showing me more of the Navlog like now to showing me less of the Navlog, so I can see the general information or not. The status indicators in the upper right corner of the screen are all the same, GPS and weather, ADSB, but also now the new flight recorder. If I tap on one of those, I see all the details about my GPS and my simulator. If I tap on the weather, I see the weather detail, all the same ADSB features that are in the iPad version of the product, and new in FlyQ EFB 3.0, you see the new flight recorder information. We'll get to more of this a little bit later, but I'll show you one key thing. If you click the button called the action button, it looks like a box with an arrow coming out of it. You can send that to a GPX system, or you can send an image, which is what I'm doing right now, to your choice of message, to mail, send it to notes, send it to Twitter, send it to Facebook, send it to Instagram, whatever. When you do that, a graphical summary of your flight plan shows up, along with basic statistics to it. Now let's have a look at augmented reality, another new feature in FlyQ3. You begin with a 2D map, you can toggle it to virtual reality. You could do that today. What's new is when you toggle the view again, you get augmented reality that blends live video from your phone or your iPad's camera with those overlay markers on the screen. So you can even have this kind of 2D overhead view as you move the iPhone or the iPad around the cockpit, it shows you where all the airports are. The airports are color coded, so you can see that in a second there, the airports that are uncontrolled are magenta or kind of pink. Airports that are controlled, which you'll see in a moment, are airports which have uh, control towers on them, just like you do see on the sectional. The key point is that you have a great sense of where the airports are just by moving the iPhone around the cockpit. On a bad day, in poor weather, in low light, it's terrific. Now here, we're not actually in flight, of course, but now we're looking at it out my desk uh, the point here is that on the iPad, you can use a split screen feature to put the augmented reality on either side of the screen, mix it with any other view you like. So you can put AR in both views, AR on the right side, airport information maybe on the left, whatever is convenient for you. Very, very cool. You can also filter the kind of airports that you see. For example, by default, we don't show the private airports, but you can turn them on like we just did. So turn them off, turn them back on again, and so on. If you fly helicopters, you can turn on helipads. You can turn on seaplane bases. 
In case of an emergency, you may want to show airports that have really short runways, less than 2,500 feet. You can do that as well. There's even a slider down the bottom that controls how far away you see those airports. So if you're flying in the middle of nowhere, you can see airports that are further away than when you're flying in the middle of a city. The third major new feature in this release of FlyQ is a flight recording, playback, and export mechanism. FlyQ automatically begins recording when you take off and stops when you land, although you can manually start and stop as well. It's indicated by a status indicator in the upper right corner of the screen, far right, that says REC. Not only does it record, we added a new map layer. On the lower right side of the map pop-up is a new layer called Flight Track. When you select Flight Track, you see the green line that represents when we've been recording the flight right there on the screen. It doesn't begin when you turn on the Flight Track layer, rather it begins when recording starts. So you can turn the Flight Track off, you can turn it back on again, and the same Flight Track is available right there. In addition to seeing it on one side of the screen though, you can use a split screen feature in FlyQ EFB on the iPad to see, for example, the flight track on maybe uh, the right side of the screen, airport information on the left, or maybe a scratch pad on the left, whatever you like to do. The split screen capability here is extremely powerful. Now, more detail on this, if you tap anywhere in the status indicators on the upper right side, you can select the flight recorder area. By default, it shows you things like the current duration of the recording, there's a stop button, that kind of thing. If you tap anywhere on that graphics, graphical summary of your flight, which you now see on the screen, it overlays the flight track right on the map. So you can see a static indication of what your flight looks like at any time. And you can actually scroll through a whole list of flights. In addition to static though, you can again scroll down that list of different flights that you've taken that have been recorded and hit the play button that looks like a blue triangle. When you hit the play button, you get that same graphical image of the flight track, but now the aircraft is moving right on there. So it's a flight simulation type system, or it's a playback system at least, uh, right built directly into FlyQ EFB. You have more details too, because FlyQ already had a flight simulator built in, so you can control the speed and the position on the flight as well. You can also display a 3D image of it. You can split the screen, so you can have a 2D image on the right side, a 3D image on the left, or whatever you like to do. Very, very powerful playback uh, capabilities are built into FlyQ. It's not just playback, though. You can hit that same action button, that square with an arrow coming out of it, and you can take that graphical image there, and you can send that to other systems, for example. You can send it to things like a message to, by email, Facebook, Twitter, that kind of thing. So let me show you what that looks like. If you select, say, for example, the Facebook icon, you see a pop-up that shows you, again, a graphical representation of what the flight looks like. You can type something into it if you like. Uh, you know, amazing $100 hamburger and so on. Type whatever you feel like. When you're done typing, you can immediately post it to your own Facebook page by tapping that post button in the upper right corner of the screen. Or if you tap somewhere uh, along with your name where it says Steve Podrachik, for example, if you're a member of a Facebook group, then instead of posting it to your own page, it'll show you a list of all your groups. For example, I'm a member of Flights Above the Pacific Northwest. And now that when I hit the post button, it's sent not to my page, but it's being sent to Facebook uh, to that flights over the Pacific Northwest. So let's just take a look. Uh, on my iPad, I'll open up the Facebook app, and here it is. This is the post we just made from within FlyQ EFB itself. Pretty neat, huh? Very powerful, very easy to do. Now let's go back to FlyQ EFB. Sometimes you don't want to see a picture, but you want to analyze that flight in great detail. So if I click that action button again, this time when I click action, Instead of selecting share image, I'll say share GPX. GPX is a flight interchange format used by Cloud Ahoy, used by Google Earth, used by, in fact, you can email this to another FlyQ user to analyze it too. But here, let's analyze this flight on Cloud Ahoy. So now I'm switching to looking at Cloud Ahoy, just running on my Mac here. This is the flight that we just took, so I can look at it from a 2D perspective using Cloud Ahoy. I can look at it from a three-dimensional perspective you see that kind of wall there as our uh, elevation is being shown. You can even, I think this is very cool, you can look at it from an out-the-cockpit view like this. Hopefully I was flying a little bit more level than that. But you get the general idea, is that by exporting the data to another system, a flight track made in FlyQ EFB can be used by other systems. 
Now, those were the three biggest changes in FlyQ EFB 3.0, but there were some other ones too, which were important. For example, if you fly helicopters, we added the new helicopter overlays that the FAA publishes. They're overlays, so you can put them on top of any existing map layer. We now publish the Gulf of Mexico charts embedded on the main map in the same way. If you fly in Mexico or in Central America, we now have the approach plates and the airports diagrams geo-referenced for those areas. We fixed a bug in the product where it would use more CPU power than necessary sometimes, which would cause the iPad to drain the battery faster and run hotter than required. We fixed a problem where the ADS-B status indicator would blink red, meaning out of battery, when you were using some in-panel systems that didn't even have a battery in the first place, like an L3. We fixed a crash when sending flight plans uh, to a Dynon or an Avidyne system, where there was a waypoint that was strictly latitude-longitude, not a named aviation point. We fixed a problem with the Stratix when it was configured specifically for ForeFlight, where FlyQ would get confused and keep giving connect and disconnect messages. There's a cap grid system built into the product, three different grid systems actually. One of them, the GARS military grid system, we had the coordinates a little bit off, we corrected that. We fixed a problem where the satellite visible layer in FlyQ EFB wasn't appearing. Not only that, when we fixed that, we found that we could actually make the satellite IR layer in the product either be color or black and white, uh, which is a nice change. And of course, we made many, many other stability and performance improvements in the product. Hopefully, you now get the impression that FlyQ EFB 3.0 really is the most significant upgrade we've ever made in the product. For Seattle Avionics, I'm Steve Petracek. Have a terrific night, and thank you for listening.